think you'd agree you're an emotional guy. Yeah, I am. Um, as emotional as Ebu Adams? Have you seen the clips of him from Tuesday night now? Well, I've, got, uh, I've just done all the... Well, we've done the clips on the way home um, Tuesday night. Uh, firstly, I definitely want to thank everyone who came. I mean, getting away support as a footballer when I was a footballer, when I had hair and happiness, um, was amazing. You always had a good connection with the away fans. They were always happy and loud, and you felt a real connection because, you know, respectfully, some people come to Pride Park uh, and go, oh, Jimmy, do you want to come? I've got a spare ticket, and they go. Whereas away fans are like hardcore, aren't they? They're the tattooed ones. So you always feel a real good relationship with them. And obviously we've been on good away form. So for anyone who made the effort, I mean, if you lived in the Exeter area, not so much credit, but if you're the ones that travel down. So yeah, so anyway, so that was good in that respect. But as regards to emotional, yeah, um, I love, so anyway, sorry, you need to edit a lot of this. So on the way home, we clipped it up. Before I've come in here now, I spoke to the physios and all that, had a meeting about what training looks like, you know, and then declip the meeting from clipped it, so it's now smaller. And there's certain things that you know I need to reiterate with the lads, and there's certain annotations, if that's the right word, to put on the video and all that. Video 1980s. Uh, so did that, and one of the clips we're showing them. I've nearly got there. Is um, uh, Ebbs uh, when he slid his body in and then celebrated it, and that is how the Italians do it. I harp on about it all, all the time. I love seeing, like I did with Sonny at Charlton when. Sib's done some good defending, he went over and high-fived, and those are the moments in the game that win your games. In the same way, if you don't tune on and are throwing in the bottom corner, you can lose games. So uh, the little things always matter. So yeah, he's obviously fired up, buzzing to play. He's a great kid. He's been brilliant on and off the pitch. And you know, it's not easy when you join a new club to hit the ground running, but it seems like he's been here forever. So um, yeah, really pleased for him. How much do you look for personality and those sort of traits in players? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, obviously, they've got to be able to play, and that's first and foremost, but there's loads of people who can play, but they've got to have the proper um, personality um, on and off the pitch, and they've got to understand that football is a team sport, not an individual sport, which everyone agrees with you when you sign them and then they come in and you're like, mm, I'm not so sure. So there's certain, you only see people's real character in difficulties, not in great times. Like, you know, in great times when you win every week, you think everyone's great. However, when they've been pulled out of the team or you're telling them you drop them, you see who they really are. And, you know, some you are really impressed with and some you're not. Like we, we talked about one of our players before. We had a player at my previous club that we took off at half time, which normally goes down horrifically with footballers. Their ego has been damaged, they you know, feel let down, they know they haven't played well, so they're in a little bit like if you get a cat in a corner, they're gonna come out fighting sometimes. Um, so uh, we dropped a player once at half time, and at the end of the team talk at half time, he stood up and said, come on lads, we've got this, shook everybody's hand when they left the dressing room, and we walked out as coaches, went, what a kid he is. And he then went to get straight back in the team and played every single game for the rest of the season. Whereas, you go the other way, and I've had players that have took their shin pads off and thrown their boots against the wall who never played again. So you can sort of see characters of players in bad times. It's a better reflection, sorry. So at the moment, I'm seeing uh, Ebbs in his best light. He looks amazing, but I wouldn't expect anything less from him. He's um, did loads of characters things about him, spoke to different managers about him, different players about him, and I just know that what sort of player he is. I do know also that he'd be devastated if he got dropped, but I know that he'd, res he'd respect the decision, but possibly not agree with it. Back home on Saturday, what sort of challenge will Stevenage pose? Well, um, Stevenage have been uh, outstanding all season, done really well away from home as well. Um, always uh, play to the last whistle, get late goals, desperate for success, as we all are, by the way. I'm not saying it like that. But they're a little bit of a wounded animal as well. They've been like, I think a few years ago, there was, I remember a season, ironically, when Shrewsbury were up there and everyone's going, oh, they'll fall away then, they'll fall away. And they never did. They you know, got through to Wembley. And I think people uh, outside of football were thinking, oh, I, don't, I can't see Stevenage being up there in March, April, May. And I, and I can, <laughs> obviously, because of my uh, relationship. So... Uh, I know that you know the last three games, the results haven't gone the way they wanted, although we're only talking about goal differences. So you're talking about one moment in a game. It's not representative of the performance. So I know it'll be a really tough game. I know they have really good uh, football in midfielders who can play um, and a real goal threat. So 
I know how tough it will be and you know they'll relish the chance of coming here and trying to get themselves back in winning ways. So it will be, as I say, about every single game. It will be a, a different, completely different game possibly to the one at Exeter, but one we'll have to you know, meet. Do you plan differently for this game? Yeah, I plan differently, or we, sorry, uh, we plan differently for every game. We always respect the opposition and what strengths we think they bring, although you have to, like fans will listen to this and go, oh no, well some fans might, but oh no, you just, you build your team up, you're great, you send them out, like it's just naive to think like that. You have to be aware of what the opposition brings and what their dangers are. You have to nullify them if you want to have any control in the game. And uh, so we're always aware of how the opposition play. Um, you know, 40% and 60% is about what we do. So um, we'll show the lads a little bit about them today and uh, certain moments in the game that we need to look in this sort of way. Like, so for example, against Exeter, our game plan was, you know, um, to let the back three have it to a certain extent, narrow right off. Our wide men had to come off narrow. If they play it long in behind, Joe should tidy up. Our line should be aggressive. Whereas against other teams, we've gone full out on that back line and uh, pressed it that way. However, we knew that their mobility in midfield and the way they passed it and got round corners against us, because we're an older team possibly, uh, we would cause difficulty. So, you know, we try and set up in a way that gives us the best chance to win. That's, and that's what all coaches, I presume, do. You have eight home games to go. How important is it that everyone makes sure Pride Park is, to use the cliché, a fortress between now and the end of the season? Yeah, it'd be great. I mean, in fairness, away fans are uh, uh, outstanding. Uh, and to have success, you need to be good at home and good away, obviously. And if we are to be successful, like everybody who turns up at the, at the, at the game on a Saturday or Tuesday night plays a part. I, I've said this for years and fans get bored of it. But uh, like if the team are successful and you, uh, you enjoy the season, like everybody's played a part. You've played a part. Uh, Joker here's played a part. The uh, like everyone, all the fans who turn up, all the players, all the staff you don't see, all the hard work, all the commercial team, like everyone plays a part, and uh, and that's what makes football so like you know uh, collective really. That it's this is massive force, and I know what it's like when we go to other grounds, uh, and you feel like their whole club is in one unification. It's hard. You feel like you you compete against the eleven, but you're competing against the person who rings the bell or whatever the case may be. So uh, for Pride Park to be bouncing uh, is great. And hopefully we can put a level of performance on that pleases people, that makes them vocal, that makes it feel amazing for the players. I know because I played that when people are cheering you and applauding you, you just feel bulletproof. You don't feel like you need any air. You don't feel any fatigue. You don't feel any lack of confidence. And the other side is when the um, uh, if you if you if you play away from home and you've got no away fans, for example, and and things aren't going well, you sort of go in the mindset of like, well, it's not really our day. Is it? everyone's for the opposition? So fans, including you know singing, cheering, and I know it's the players' performance that makes that happen. I'm not stupid, but hopefully that we can have performances till the end of the season that you know everybody who turns up, apart from the away fans, obviously. Uh, really enjoy it because the lads have been a ledge.